Morning you guys, it's Karen and I wanted to do another puppy training video. I've only done one. I did a video talking about how to train your puppy to use a bell um, to go outside for his business and that's what our Watson does and it was very very easy to train him and enjoyable and it really really works well for us other than of course he rings it to just go out and play as well. Um, but those of you that follow my vlog channel regularly will know that I had a huge problem with separation anxiety with Watson as a puppy. Um, Watson, well actually not just as a puppy, he's still a puppy now but it's, it was an ongoing problem. Watson is now 14 months old, so he's still considered a puppy until he's 18 months. Not much longer till he's my adult dog rather than my little baby, although he'll always be my little baby of course. But um, yeah, we really struggled with it and I think that we made quite a few basic errors when we got him. This is our first dog as a couple. Both of us had dogs in the family when we were children. I grew up with dogs, but this was our first dog with just us. So we were definitely inexperienced and I would do things completely different this time round. Okay, that's better, Kev's just left. When Kev's here, I feel really weird talking when he's like in the vicinity. I know that's strange, but never mind. Um, so what was I saying? Yeah, we were inexperienced and didn't really know how to handle it. Um, and there was a lot of people telling us to just leave him and I don't know, in hindsight, maybe we should have. So let me tell you what happened with Watson. So Watson is the only dog in this household and we got him as a puppy. And the kind of separation anxiety started almost immediately, like within the first week. And by that, I mean, we tried to leave him in a, we tried to put him in a playpen. And if we left him in his playpen, he would scream and try and get out. Um, the first mistake we made was we tried, we decided we would do it slowly and Kev sat in the room. He took a day off, he sat in the room and he said, I'm just gonna sit and read my book and we're gonna get through this first bit. We'll let him scream, but I'll be in the room so he shouldn't be frightened, you know, that I've left and then we'll start leaving him for a few seconds. That's what they tell you to do, leave for a few seconds, build it up to a minute, build it up to five minutes, that kind of thing. So this is what we decided, but it didn't stop at all. And so we got a trainer out and she said, first thing she said is the worst thing you can do is be in the room because you're, <coughs> excuse me, you're putting yourself, it's like putting a donut outside of your reach and you really want a donut. You're not, you're within reach, but he can't reach you, you know. So um, she said, the first thing you need to do is do what you were doing, but you need to be outside of the room. So we tried to do that and it just didn't seem to be working. And whenever, there were occasions I had to leave him because I was working at the time, I was working from home, but I remember I had a meeting um, and I would leave, I would, my stomach would churn when I knew I had to leave the house and I would get to the door and we started off with him in the kitchen behind a security gate, that's where we started. Um, the, the playpen just did not work out, we gave up on that. So we started him off in the kitchen behind a security gate and he would scream and like throw himself at the security gate and try and get over it, but he just wasn't gonna manage it. Um, he could see the door directly. So that was just awful for me because he just, he was in such a state, you know, and I went away thinking, what if he gets himself stuck in between the bars or hurts himself trying to get over it? What if he gets to the top and then falls? You know, there were so many things in my mind that I, it was just awful. So then we tried him in the crate because he was crated when we got him at night, we crated him. In fact, no, we used his crate all the time at first and he seemed to love his crate, but they just got to a point after a few months where he wasn't keen on going in his crate. Um, and we took the decision to let him out of his crate most of the time. To this day, he has his crate and he loves sleeping in it. When he comes back, he's with the walker now, when he comes back, he'll run in and he'll go and sleep in his crate, but we never now close the door and we never leave him in it. Um, but we decided at the time, let's try his crate and see if that works. So we crated him. The way that I checked what was going on, apart from obviously me leaving, was I video camera. I just put a camcorder in front of the crate and I would switch it on when I went. Um, I'll insert a clip here of what happened the last time we crated him. him in the crate left and it just wasn't good it was absolutely horrendous and when I watched the video back I was really really upset 
And I just thought, what are we going to do? You know, we tried to think, could we leave them in the living room? But the, the other reason we stopped the kitchen, sorry, I'm being a bit disjointed, but hopefully it will make sense to you. Um, is we'd I'd videoed him jumping up onto the not right onto the sideboards but he could get access to the sideboards so I knew that I needed to move him away from the kitchen we've eventually settled on the hall actually that was the best place and that's what's worked for us and he still has a view of the door but there's a good reason why he doesn't now mind us leaving so it wasn't it wasn't that what some what separation anxiety to me would suggest that he didn't like being separated from me or from Kev but it wasn't necessarily the case because he was always extremely happy to go to daycare and still is now if we go to daycare he like he doesn't even say goodbye to us you know he is off he's super excited and he goes in there and he's always been that way but not in every situation like I remember we went to see my friends and I went to the bathroom and he was whining with the fact that I was in the bathroom you know he didn't like that he was away from me there but it was more being left on his own was the problem for him as opposed to the separation um, so I got another trainer in and during all this time of course we had tried leaving him for a few seconds building up it we just never could build it up because I couldn't even get to the door without him being in a state so the first thing I tried before we got another trainer out was conditioning so one of the things you can do is to decondition is not the right word but he obviously knew the cues that I was going to go out. So it was me getting my coat on, getting my shoes on, getting my bag on, checking the doors were locked. I usually go for a wee before I leave. And he'd start getting worked up and I could tell he would follow me around and be really anxious. He knew that I was going to be going and he was getting worked up. And so by the time we both left, he was worked up and I was worked up. So I read about this deconditioning. So I just don't do any of those things or I do those things throughout the day without him without actually leaving so what I started doing was I put my coat on walk up and down take my coat off I would put my shoes on and leave my shoes on I would turn the keys in the door I'd open the door I'd shut the door um, and I did this for a few days constantly and he did start to get used to the fact that opening the door did not mean I was going turning the keys did not mean I was going going and collecting my keys from where I keep my keys did not mean I was leaving and it definitely does a couple of problems with that that they don't tell you about when they're advising you to use this kind of course of action firstly you have to keep that up forever um, because well for us it I needed to keep it up because the minute that I stopped taking my keys you know turning the keys during the day it then again became associated with leaving um, and the other thing was that despite all the conditioning you did at some point leave I did at some point leave the house and he would then realize and he would then get anxious and he would start screaming and jumping at the bars and all of that so despite the fact that you might decondition them to all of these cues you still are going to leave at some point so that wasn't really the solution for me that I was very anxious when I was leaving and that made things 10 times worse because he could sense my anxiety for sure um the other thing that we tried was a lot of we would leave him kongs with peanut butter with cheese with everything that he loves to eat we would leave but he wouldn't eat it he would not touch it um he didn't get so far as he never had an accident other than when he was a very small puppy and that would have been more to do with him being a puppy than the separation anxiety um, and he didn't draw so he wasn't an extreme case from that point of view because those are the signs if your puppy is drooling has accidents when you're gone is destructive um, they are all signs of extreme separation anxiety he wasn't quite that bad his actions were bad like I said screaming throwing himself at the bar is another sign of extreme separation anxiety because that means it's actually physiologically affecting them that they no longer have any interest in any food their own go only goal is to get out and find where you are and to not be alone um, and I remember at the time actually somebody at work really really peed me right off because I think she asked what I was doing at the weekend and I said that he was going to stay with my friend because Kev and I needed a dinner date we needed to go out for dinner um, because we hadn't been out for so long and you know it'd been a really stressful time etc and she said to me you do know it's just a dog you just need to leave it and I thought that's somebody that doesn't know dogs at all she has cats but she doesn't 
obviously know about dogs and what I would say about that is it's dangerous. Separation anxiety is dangerous. It raises their blood pressure. Um, it makes them more and more anxious, which doesn't do them any good at all. It makes problems with their digestion. But worse than that, there's been cases of dogs that have gone through a glass window, that have tried to headbutt through walls and have injured themselves. Like it's a real problem. So it's not something to be just thought of. I, some people believe just leave them screaming and they'll get over it. And I'm sure there are cases where they do just get over it, but that would not be my choice at all. So we got this other trainer out and he was absolutely brilliant. The first trainer we had, I talked about it on my vlog at the time, not my cup of tea, didn't like the woman at all. Um, and actually she didn't give us any solutions. Anyway, this guy turned up and he was absolutely brilliant. And it's funny because I had said to him, I wanted to spend the hour that he was here talking through everything and I wanted him to give me answers. I didn't really want to do anything practical. I just wanted to talk and had all this whole list of questions and I wanted answers to them. Um, which is typical me, I like to control situations, but he arrived, we, we did sit and talk and he did all, immediately do a couple of things with Watson. And he said, right, I just want you to get out and walk out the room and I want to watch what he does. And he was watching to see if Watson was watching me and, and what I was doing, you know, and it did turn into a practical session, but he was 100% right to direct it that way and it did just work. And the first thing he said is, you've got to stop eyeballing him. He said, you leave the room and you look back at him with a worried look on your face, like, oh, are you all right? And he said, you've got to stop that because you're giving him anxiety. You are saying, oh, I'm leaving you. Do you think you'll manage kind of thing? So that was, it was good that he had, you know, the, the balls, if you like, to tell me that. Um, the other thing he said to me, which was really, really encouraging, but also sad, was that he had never seen a dog as anxious as Watson or get as worked up as Watson because when anybody went past the window, sometimes Watson can lie and ignore people at the window, but he, other times, everybody going past, regardless if it's an old woman, children, other dogs, whatever, he howls and jumps at the window and just goes crazy. Um, and he said he's very worked up and he suggested a few things, but funny enough, I was already doing them, but they'd be great for you if you haven't already tried these, go immediately and buy them. The first one is, um, Maxi Calm tablets. In fact, let me get them. So he said to me, try Maxi Calm tablets. I already use Maxi Calm. They are liver flavored tablets. You get 120 in here. Um, and Watson loves them. So he gets one of these a day, crunches it quite happily. I don't know how much of a difference it makes because he's, he's never been off them since then, if you see what I mean. And I think it's, hopefully it's mostly the behavioral changes we've made. And some of this I think is helping. Then I also give him one of these, which I know it's in a Mac bottle, but it's actually Valerian and Skullcap. Um, and I just use a pill pocket and give him one of these. Something else you can try. I haven't, I gave him one one evening and it didn't seem to do anything. Um, these are California poppy extract, but they are, they're quite big capsules. And I don't know how to give him a big capsule without a huge thing of corned beef or cheese or something. And then sometimes he gets it, the capsule out. So you have to give him some more. It's quite difficult. And if you open the capsule, it's quite a bitter taste and he won't eat anything. So I've not yet figured out how to give him these, but that's another option um, that I believe has worked for a lot of other people. I'll link them for you below. He said, is you need an Adaptil spray? And I said to him, I've already got an Adaptil a few infuser, no diffuser, I've got an Adaptil diffuser in the hall. And he said, well, that's great. It's great that you've got the Adaptil diffuser. He said, but I would add in a spray because with the Adaptil diffuser, it, it sets it at one level throughout the whole day. There were periods of time where Watson was being anxious. And so a diffuser, whilst it would generally calm him, it wouldn't focus on those really anxious times. And he said, with a spray, if you spray it 20 minutes before you're going out, it will be at its most potent and he gets a real hit of it. And I thought that made total sense. The only thing was spraying it then became a, um, a cue for me leaving if you see what I mean but that wasn't a problem because what he said was ignore all of this deconditioning he said because of the problems I'd mentioned he said otherwise you're always going to have to avoid getting your handbag or going for a wheel doing any of those things and it's going to make you anxious he said we need to make it that he wants you to leave um, now bearing in mind he wasn't interested in food as a like I could leave him a Kong, but me leaving, he was more focused on that. And he said, you've got to start with, 
it's really hard to explain, but let me tell you exactly what he did. So he started off, he put Watson in the kitchen and closed the security gate and him, the trainer and I stood in the hall with treats. And what we used were cat sticks, these cat sticks that were so soft and easy to break up. Um, and they're just like liver or chicken or beef, something like that. Um, and you, we just stood there and he said, he is completely staring at you and focused because that gate is there and he knows he can't get out. He wants to see where are you going? So we first, before you consider leaving the house, you need to get him to a state whereby he can look away from you and he's okay with not focusing on you. Then you start to move to the side, then you start to walk to the door and you do it that way. It's not just leaving them in a room for five minutes, that kind of thing. So we stood staring at him, it took ages and he said he's very, very stubborn, but it will happen. So we just stood for ages and ages and Watson stood at this gate staring at me and then just one second he looked at the back door and looked away and we clicked and threw treats into the kitchen um, and so we obviously then clocked that oh okay she's not going anywhere at the moment therefore I can have a treat and it's just me looking away that gets me that treat so the anxiety was lessened from me going away and he became interested in the treat and so it it was slow like it took about but not that slow. It didn't take me weeks and weeks. It took me a few days to train him that. Watson is a very fast learner, I have to say. In that hour, we progressed to me walking to the door and walking back, and then I'd throw in a treat because he didn't, not because he didn't look at me because he didn't bark or anything with me walking to the door and walking back. And I could see his brain processing the kind of, oh, she's not actually leaving. Then what we did was we got him into the hall. I can't remember whether that was the second visit or not. Put him into his bed i told him to stay in his bed and i would walk i didn't even walk all the way to the door the first time i walked a few steps away came back again click and treated him for staying and so at first you're just getting that association of you're okay when you're on your own and i'm around the house um to quickly jump to how it ended because it's just a progression of that what we eventually did was taught him to play find it when i was leaving so we've already to talk taught Watson we had already taught him find it so if you don't know what find it is it's basically you get something like those cat sticks or anything that's tiny little treats and you hide them around the house so I would put them on skirting boards underneath a chair on top of a chair places that he can reach and get to you then give him a little smell of it and you say find it and sort of at first you can help and you can kind of say find it and sort of point but eventually he'll get the game and he absolutely loves the game of find it so what I do now, and I just, the first time it happened, I just couldn't believe how well it worked. I rip up pieces of whatever, that stick, or I use little duck treats, something like that. I will put some in a little box, I'll put some along the skirting board, I'll put some in a little thing that you roll about. And then as I'm leaving, and he does get, he follows the cues, he follows me around getting my coat on, etc. As I'm leaving, I say to him, find it, and then I open the door. The first time he did kind of look at the door and you can see he was thinking, mm, do I want to find it or do I want to panic about mum leaving? But I went out and shut the door without looking at him. That was very, very key because as I started the, the practice in leaving the house, he was saying to him, you've got to stop eyeballing him. You've got to not look back at him. You've got to leave as if there's no problem at all. Um, and so if I leave, don't look at him, he, I, I could see from the camera that I had um, that he would look for a minute and then he would like, oh, find it, you know, and I would sometimes even shout through the letterbox, find it, and he would run up and find it. That, it just went, got better and better since then, and it progressed to the last time I left him, he, he didn't even look back. He just, I said find it and he was off and he, he's now not bothered at us leaving. Sometimes he doesn't even get up from his bed and I never imagined I would be there. I really didn't because like I said, he was kind of stuck to my side. Um, he would go off into on his own in different rooms when he felt like it, but certainly I never thought that would happen. I never thought he wouldn't notice me leaving or he'd be okay with me leaving. Um, and then it's progressed further. And now when I come home, he doesn't run to the door. That was the hard thing as well, because you have to ignore them. When you come in, you have to just do something else first because otherwise you are making a fuss of the fact that you've been away and you're saying, oh God, I've been out there in the bad, bad, bad world, you know, and now I'm home, thank God. So that was very hard. The way that I got through that, I pretended I was on my phone. I know it's crazy, but it's the only way that I felt not guilty coming in and speaking to him 
it's treating him a bit like a human and it's ridiculous but whatever gets you through and so I thought I got my phone and I'd come in the door and I'd say hello yeah I know I know in my head if he did understand any of it then he would understand that I was on the phone and therefore I couldn't pay attention to him but it meant that I didn't make a fuss I'd then put the phone down by which time he'd sort of wandered away and stopped jumping up because he'd normally jump up with a big waggy tail and everything it was heartbreaking um, and then I could say hello to him and that's so. what I did um, or what we did actually no it was it was a lot me because Kev was obviously out working so it was me that had to practice this and also the interesting thing was when Kev used to leave Watson it wasn't really a problem but because Kev was working and I was working from home it was me that needed to get to a point where I could leave him and feel okay and not pass my anxiety on um, because otherwise I was just stuck in the house all day and I couldn't even pop to the shops you know it, literally I never went anywhere in the first couple of months I didn't leave the flipping house unless Kev was here and even then Kev had to hold him because if I left he would kick off um, and some people believe that it's like he was because I'm so anxious and I am an anxious person which is a big problem um, that he was worried about me you were never sure is he worried about being alone or is he worried about me out there he can't be there to protect me and so he wants to come with me so that he can protect me or is he worried about being on his own he's certainly not worried about being on his own now and he doesn't seem as worried about me going he does sometimes he is sometimes bothered like if Kevin and I are walking with him say we're going to the car and I'm going off somewhere and Kev's taking him for a walk he doesn't like it when I leave, you know, but he doesn't, it's nowhere near the way that he was before. Um, but like I said, when Kev used to leave him, no problem at all. From the very beginning, Kev has been able to walk out the door without puppy chasing after him. Um, I mean, maybe the first time it happened, he chased after him, but Kev can pretty much leave. And I think it's because Kev is calm and doesn't have that anxiousness about him, you know, um, which I found very interesting because it, clearly it's me that needed the work, you know. So I hope that that's been helpful to you. I really wanted to do this video because I cried so many tears about it. Um, I am obsessed with my dog, I admit it. You know, people say to me that I, I talk about him and treat him like he's a child. Well, I don't have human children. He is my fur baby. Um, and I, I don't apologize for treating him as such um, because I don't do anything to harm him. I'm not, you know, I don't overfeed him or like I've, I've had to go through this period of training him to be okay without me. And actually, let me tell you something that somebody said that really hit home. Because the problem was, I did, at one point I said to my husband, I'm just not gonna go out, it's fine. We'll never leave him alone. And therefore he won't have to go through this and it's fine, you know. But I thought, well, what if I'm ever in hospital or what if I have to go away for whatever reason? Um, that's not very fair to him, you know? Something that my neighbour said to me, they've also got a dog and our dogs are very good friends now. They met each other very early on and they're both puppies and they just love each other. Um, but she said to me, how can you teach Watson that you're going to come back if you never go away? And I thought that's so true. The big thing for the dog when you're leaving them, puppy or dog, because it doesn't just have to be a puppy that, that suffers from this, is that they don't know if you're coming back, when you're coming back, and if you'll be okay. You have to teach them that, and you're only gonna teach them that by constantly going away and coming back again. Whether that is going to the car, and I did that. I went, you know, I didn't immediately after the trainer arrived, leave him for an hour. I went and sat in my car for five minutes and came back. I went for 10 minutes, I took my laptop with me and sat, sat editing videos in my car, and then I would come back in. Um, I used a camcorder, like I said, or you can use, um, there's an app, called at home video um, that is really really good if you've got two devices so I use my iPhone with my iPad um, and that you can talk to them through it as well which I'm not sure if that's a good thing or not but um, yeah when she said that to me you know you you're not going to be able to teach him that you're coming back unless you actually leave that really sunk into me and I thought the right thing to do is to leave him because I was feeling guilty for leaving him and feeling terrible about leaving him in that state and I, I felt like I wanted him to understand I don't want to leave you of course I'm coming back the way to teach him you're coming back is to leave him and prove it and come back and everything's okay and nothing happened you know and then do that more and more and they'll realize okay she always comes back you know so I'm really going to stop rambling now because I'm sure this has been way too long but like I said I was desperate to put this up because it was heartbreaking for me and I didn't feel like anybody really understood I didn't know anybody else that was going through the same thing um, 
all the advice wasn't working for me. You know, people are saying give him food and I was like, he won't eat food, you know. And so I just wanted to put this up in the hope that it will help somebody else in that situation. So if you've got any questions at all, please do leave them in the comments below. I have got many, many videos of Watson, many vlogs of him. Um, and like I said, I will put maybe the beginning or end, maybe when I was talking about it, I'll put the vlog in so you can see if I've still got it of him in his crate, although I hate watching it and, and how bad he was. Um, and that's how he was. In fact, that was kind of mild, the one that I've got on video, because he wasn't throwing himself at the bars like he has done in the past. Um, that's the other thing. If they're in a crate and acting like that, they can break their teeth and it is dangerous. So um, thank you very much for watching today. I wish you well and I wish you luck with all of your um, separation anxiety problems that you may have. Um, and I'll see